Oliver, why don't we begin by your telling us what led you to write Naked in the Public Eye? As a practicing educator, I read a lot of literature on research and leadership. And more and more, I realize that there needs to be uh, more literature on the practical um, aspects of leadership. And so Naked in the Public Eye is a practical roadmap that illuminates what I think are the skills and the traits to be a successful leader not only in education, but a leader of any system. And the purpose of writing a book is to contribute to that literature. So people who are practic practitioners and are people who are aspiring to be practitioners have a resource based upon experience to turn to. Now, is this your first book? This is my first book, um, and hopefully the first of many. <laughs> Good. So um, you've got a new second career in addition to uh, a superintendency. Well, as so, I said, no, there's life after the superintendency, so I'm looking forward to that. Good. Um, we'll talk more later about what it was like writing the book, but why don't um, you tell us first uh, what the book's all about? What What is it in a nutshell? And also, while you're talking, uh, I love the title, Naked in the Public Eye. It's really eye-catching. Uh, so when you're telling us about the book, also tell us how you came up with that great title. Um, in a nutshell, the book is, is um, framed to, to contextualize the, the complexity and challenges in education leadership. Um, and it also recognized the heightened level of accountability that's currently in education. And so the purpose then is to really, really focus on on what are those things that are required to be great system leaders, uh, what are those um, cognitive skills that's necessary, as well as the non-cognitive skills that's necessary to be a great systems leader. Um, and certainly one of the things I wanted to do with this book was make sure that whomever the reader is, that they walk away with something that will enhance their ability to be even more effective. Well, speaking of readers, and then I'll let you continue, but who, uh, who are you primarily writing for? Who do you see as the audience for the book? Uh, certainly, I think first and foremost, people who are, are current um, system leaders, education leaders. But when you read the book um, and put it in the context of leadership in the big picture, this, this cuts across the board in terms of industries. Um, recognizing my background um, comes from an economics perspective. So while I'm an, I'm an educational leader, um, I, I think about an organization from the standpoint of running a multi-million dollar business. And so, so if be it a business leader or education leader, someone reading this book, I think they'll see that common thread in terms of truly what's required to be effective. Well, certainly I can imagine superintendents, uh, uh, executives aspiring to a superintendency. What about board members, school board members? You see Certainly, the um, governance and leadership are, are, are essential. And so uh, one of the things in thinking about this, think about who are the key constituents that make a system run. So we have certainly our, our district level administrators. We have our building level administrators. We have our board members, but also we have community leaders. We have people who are heads of, of various organizations that support the charge of schools and education. So, so this would also be a great read for, for individuals in those um, particular um, domains. Good. Well, tell us a little more about the content and format of the book, if you would. Certainly. Um, I, I'm fond of saying that this book is, is short enough um, to read, um, but yet profound enough that you walk away feeling as if, wow, that was worthwhile. Um, and so, so, so it's a great weekend read if, um, if someone has time to, to sit on a weekend or if you're traveling, a great traveling read on a plane. Um, but more importantly, when I look at the book, the book is laid out in, in a very um, thoughtful way in terms of the chapters, 12 very powerful chapters that talks about the personal aspect of, of leadership 
um, talks about painting the bigger picture in terms of contextualizing um, the vision of an organization. It speaks to the importance of, of our business of fostering a sense of significance in our students. Um, and it goes on to talk about things such as even how do we um, em empower our staff to be successful and how do we in fact position organizations to, to be prosperous into the future. So, so it's not only talking about the, the, the current conditions of accountability in education, but it really speaks to how do we re retool our schools to ensure for the next 5, 10, 15 years um, we are truly in a position to convert all the challenges that education face um, and, and, and support the emerging needs of our students. So the 12 chapters of the book um, are, while they're related, they're also very independent in the sense that if someone has a particular interest in terms of, for example, um, how do we convert challenges into opportunities, that's chapter 9. Um, the book speaks to some of the things that you have to think about when faced with challenges in the organization and the steps necessary to, to in fact, transform those challenges into opportunities for the system. Well, it sounds like a fascinating book. You said uh, uh, a fairly um, painless read. Uh, how many pages is the book? Um, this, the book is, is slightly, um, slightly over 100 pages. And, oh, great. And, uh, um, and the, if there's one thing that I, I wish, because as you age, um, the, 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 the print becomes um, a little bit smaller. But it's, but it's truly designed to be a book that, as a reader, you pick it up. You don't want to put it down. Excellent. So literally, I could read your book. And I haven't yet, but I'm really looking forward to it uh, on my next trip from Tampa Bay, where I'm located, to, uh, say, uh, Indianapolis. 120 pages. I could get through a good deal of the book. Might want to read it again, but at least I could give it a first, first read. Well, thinking about your readers, your audience for the book, what are the, the key lessons, the preeminent lessons you want them to take away from reading the book? I think the preeminent lesson is, and it sounds somewhat cliche, um, is that leadership matters, um, that in order for us to to provide a quality educational experience for our students, we need to have quality leadership. And so, so that's one thing, that's one thread that drags through the entire book, the significance and the importance of leadership in molding the minds and shaping the futures um, of our students. And I assume you use the term leadership as meaning much more than administration and management, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's a phrase that's throughout the book that, call, that refers to leaders for learning, and that's without title. Um, we're talking about people who are invested in, in not only improving themselves in terms of being students of the profession, but people who are invested in finding creative solutions um, to, to provide um, great opportunity and, opportunity and options for our students. And so, so that cuts across the board. So even going back to one of your initial questions about who's the audience, the audience is teachers. I would love for teachers who, who truly are committed to, to their own professional growth to read this book to realize that as, as teachers in classrooms, they are truly the leaders for learning. And so, so the leaders is not a title in terms of administrative leaders, but people with the mindset to make positive contributions to education. Well, great. It sounds like uh, it's going to be a, a fascinating read and, and very powerful resource. Uh, I want to come back to an, uh, an earlier question. I'm fascinated by the title, Naked in the Public Eye. I don't think you mentioned how you came up with that, but uh, that's not a title I'd think of immediately. Where did it come from? Well, you know, when I think about it, um, education leadership is a public act. Um, we, we are often scrutinized by the public about what we do, um, and, and the, accounting, the accountability is never ending. And so the title speaks to that. It speaks to the fact that 
that as leaders, um, we, we actually we function in the public eye. And the public might be our internal public in terms of, of our staff and students. And the public is also our external public in terms of parents and community. And, and so, so in order to be effective as a leader, we must first embrace that reality, that people will scrutinize everything that we do. And so subsequently, it's our responsibility to make sure that we dot the I's and cross the T's, um, knowing that, that people are watching and, and people are judging. And in some cases, people are drawing conclusions um, without um, ample information. And so that's a part of the accountability of leadership. And, and if we embrace that from the beginning, I think we're much more effective as leaders. Well, congratulations on a great title, by the way. I, um, I love it. It's an eye catcher, and that's really very important, as you no doubt know. Um, I was, as I looked through your, the chapters of the book and the material you shared with me, uh, I came across a really interesting sentence I'd like you to say a little bit more about. You say, Leadership is a guidepost, not a hitching post. What do you mean there? I, I, I mean because oftentimes, you know, people, quote, unquote, make it, get in the position of authority and, and see that as the, the final achievement versus getting into the position of authority and seeing it as an opportunity to, to grow other leaders. To, to, to provide uh, mentoring for others, to, to, to clear the path so others can, in fact, um, move into leadership positions. And so, so it's not a place where once you become a, a leader for system or you obtain a particular position title that, that you, as you say, you, know, you, 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 you hit your line and say, okay, I've made it and that's it. I see leadership as something that, that the greatest obligation we have is to, in fact, grow other leaders. Um, and so, so it is how do we provide that guidance, that mentoring, um, that empowerment, that embodiment that others need to have in order to, to have a, a growing pool of quality leadership. Right now, I think one of the greatest challenges that we have in education is, in fact, to get people to go into leadership or administrative positions. And so, so as a leader or someone in administrative capacity, I think part of my job is to, in fact, clear the path um, so others will follow. Well, you know, I was thinking while you were talking about leadership, and it's obviously, uh, I think, the overarching theme of the book, wouldn't you agree? That's correct. Absolutely. Um, do you believe that graduate schools of education, generally speaking, are producing leaders? Are they addressing the leadership question adequately? Or is you know, one of the I, reasons you wrote the book that they are. I, I was going to say, ironically, um, being an adjunct at three different local universities here in um, upstate New York, and and seeing some of the the texts and resources that, that 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 I'm basically saying you should use this, I find it frustrating. I find it frustrating because, quite frankly, which in some cases, it's too theoretically based, where where people really don't get a feel of what it's like to actually be in the trenches, so to speak. Um, and so, so what I, I often see, even on the other side of the coin, interviewing um, um, individuals for various administrative positions, I'm always, uh, always shocked and, and dismayed by the inability for people to even contextualize a big picture and articulate a vision and, and a plan to, to implement things. And so, so I, I think there is a struggle. I think there's a, a, a struggle right now between um, too much theory and, and, and not enough practice in many of the programs. And very often, of course, reading the theory doesn't give you many clues about how to put it into practice. So. There can be a real gap, wouldn't you say, between Absolutely. theory and practice? I, I agree, and, and that's why, you know, I say after being in the superintendency now, this is my 17th year, I think I've seen a lot of things, um, and, and I hope that, that I capture some of that in the book so others can learn from my experience as a practitioner and, 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 and put it in a context in terms of their own situations. 
And so, so, so hopefully this book is, is designed, um, yes, it has a, a lot of theor theoretical basis. However, it's designed to, to spur the thoughts of practitioners. It's designed to help um, enhance the skills of practitioners. And more importantly, it's designed to inspire people to get into leadership, knowing that it's truly, at the end of the day, leadership matters. Well, as I've said, it sounds like a fascinating book. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's, um, let's turn to your experience uh, in, in writing the book and, and tell us a bit about the writing, uh, including not only what it was like and what you really enjoyed and found satisfying about it, but also what did you find challenging and what major resources did you draw on uh, beyond your experience? What literature did you tap into? So just generally, tell us about the writing experience. <laughs> to me, the, the writing experience was, was to, to some degree, therapeutic. Um, and I say that because I, I didn't, just, didn't necessarily set out to say, okay, I'm going to write a book by this time. I started the process by, okay, let's capture a lot of thoughts and experiences that um, has, have accumulated over the years. And, and, and so it became one of those um, mental exercises, if you will, one of those challenges you place on yourself to say, okay, how do I make sense out of all these things that have transpired over the years, different things I've written over the years? And so it became like my personal challenge. And then when I realized that, wow, this could actually be something that, that's, that's worthwhile sharing in terms of a book, um, I was actually approached by someone who said, hey, um, after, actually after a speech, say, hey, do you have a book? And I thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, it's one of those moments of, oh, I've been playing with this idea of a book, and now someone is asking, do you have a book, you know, to sign? And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's time. And so, so I, I, I put a timeline on myself to say, okay, I need to do certain things. I reached out to a couple different um, individuals to ask about the publishing process and was very fortunate that um, ASA um, has a relationship with uh, Roman Littlefield. And, and at that point, the process began in terms of timelines and time frames, uh, which kind of forced me to, to be a little bit more disciplined, if you will, to, to, to start putting more on paper. But I, I really felt the process was, was very therapeutic. It was great to, to, to be able to contextualize years and years of experience and but more importantly, the, to try to synthesize it into something manageable, which actually became the greatest challenge. How do I go from a lot of thoughts and ideas to a very manageable book? Mm. And I suppose part of that was mapping out your chapter outlines, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think I spend probably um, as much time doing that than anything else because, <laughs> as, as I said, I wanted the chapters to <clears throat> to be supportive of each other, um, a seamless read, but also want the chapters to, 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 to a large degree be independent. Um, and so, so I spent a lot of time thinking about that, thinking about it as a reader. If I, if I was reading this book, what, what's the flow like? It doesn't make sense. And, and so, so the whole time writing the book, I wrote the book from the standpoint of the reader. Would I read this book? Mm -hmm. So you tried to put yourself in the reader's place throughout the process. What uh, did you? Ha were there any particular challenges that you encountered, uh, other than what you've mentioned? Any um, anything that ground you to a halt momentarily, or you know? I, I guess I, I, I'm not sure if I was just one of those things. Sometimes you say this beginner's luck, or sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Um, <laughs> and, and and so, quite, I, I enjoy the process. I'm one of those individuals that that often I'm up at three, four in the morning. And so, so basically, what I did, I I, I just committed every day to put in an hour, hour and a half every morning um, um, prior to preparing for work. Um, just writing, you know, in some cases just, mm -hmm. just freely writing down thoughts or, um, or capturing information or, or things that I've written in the past and, and trying to make heads and tails of it. Um, but I think the thing that ironically, as I said before, that actually was the biggest challenge was to actually stop writing. 
got to the point where um, even with the publisher, they're like, okay, at some point I just need to stop. And I think that was the most challenging point is when do you stop and, and, and to say, okay, enough is enough because after a while you start to get into, okay, we should revise this, I should change this, I should change this. <laughs> and, and that process itself becomes, quite frankly, with you, the enemy to success. Well, you know, I think many great writers like Ernest Hemingway have said uh, discipline is so critical. Even when you feel stumped, you sit, force yourself to sit down and spend that hour putting words on paper, right? And that helps that process to go forward. Because um, you don't feel like writing every day, do you? Well, you do. <laughs> No, you don't, and you know, and, and not only that. There, there are things that you know. You write it, and you think, "Wow, this is wonderful," and then a few days later, you read it, and you think, "What was I thinking?" Um, so I, I think the the process, the, the the due diligence, the discipline process is absolutely critical, and and also to the honesty, you know, to to be honest with yourself, and also to get others to read it. And to be honest with you, um, I had several colleagues read um, several drafts and and ask, you know, give me honest, critical feedback. Um, don't worry about my emotions. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. Just want honest, critical feedback. And that in itself is a is a disciplinary process to be able to to truly have someone read something that you take pride in, and and cut it up and and redline it and give it back to you. And some instances tell you that okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, at all, and so so it takes pride out of the the equation, and and quickly go into the mode of okay. At the end of the day, it's not what I think about my book; it's what the readers will think about my book. Well, you know that's a great point. You can't forget you're not writing for yourself; you're writing for a particular group of leaders, and you had them in mind when when you were writing. Well. Um, Oliver, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about Naked in the Public Eye. Um, it's it's out now, right? So yes, it people is. can get it at the uh, Woman and Littlefield website. Can they also get it from AASA on their website? Um, right now, they can. They get it from AASA, and to be quite frank with you, um, you get it from Amazon. <laughs> oh, that's so, right. Well, you so, probably these days get it any number of Exactly, exactly. I mean, you type the title into your, into your search engine, and there are a number of ways to, to get copies of it. Now, what's the title of your next book? Um, actually, actually, I have a title of my next oh book my already. Oh, my gosh. I, was, I do. I and, and, that sort of facetiously, but uh, yeah, oh, my yeah. gosh, you are an ambitious writer. So, well, well, you know, it's, 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 it's at least the title I'm thinking right now, and, and it's kind of an awkward thing. The title is Perhaps If. Um, those two words, perhaps if. And I think about it all the time because I think about the work that we do, and oftentimes, you know, we hear perhaps if I would have done this, perhaps mm -hmm. if I would have thought about it this way, perhaps if. And so... So the focus on, on that is perhaps if, and thinking about um, how times are changing significantly for schools and community, and perhaps if, and the chapters will flow from that. Well, I think we've got another really fascinating book on the way. Uh, you must be one very disciplined writer to already be started on your next book. Um, thanks, Oliver. Appreciate your time. I know how busy you are, especially with your writing as well as heading a school system. Uh, appreciate your time. I look forward to reading the book, and I'm sure our listeners will too. Take care. Thanks much, and uh, have a great day.